Now, what is going on, guys? Today, I want to discuss two more uh, token endpoint authentication and authorization methods that you also find in the OpenID Connect uh, spec. And that is the client secret JVT and or client secret JOT and the client secret private key. So let's just quickly recap. If you're if you're a confidential client, authentication between you and the authorization server is required. Uh, the simplest way of authenticating of doing uh, of having like client credentials is by using uh, HTTP basic auth. So you put everything like the the client secret in the header in the authorization header as Bira token. Or you can also put it like in the payload. So this is like client secret post. This is what we discussed before. Yeah. So these are like these two over here. There's of course also none, but yeah, this is like not relevant right now. Now the is issue with this is that every time you make this request, you include the secret in your request. And that's of course not very secure. And that's why there is something called client secret jot. And as the name already says, you are using JSON web tokens to do the authentication and authorization. And the way you, you're doing that is you have a, sh a client secret. Yeah, so you still have client credentials and you still have this client secret, but you're not sending that thing over the wire, but you're using it to create a JSON web token. And this JSON web token must use the HMAC SHA algorithm and then as a direct implication it is also clear that you have a shared secret between the authorization server and the confidential client so that means you use a JSON web token but you use uh, HMAX instead of asymmetric cryptography and then there's of course a few other rules so certain claims need to be pre present so for example the issuer claim since the client is creating the jot the issue is like the client id the subject is also client id because the the jot is about the client itself right the audience is like the authorization server to to whom you send a token to there should be a unique or there has to be a jti so unique identifier for the token to prevent reuse because it must only be used once and there needs to be an exp expires uh, claim to indicate when this token is going to be invalid. Uh, yeah, and then you take this thing, you post it to the token endpoint, and that is like how you do authentication and authorization. And you take this token here and you put it as client assertion. And client assertion type is then like this URI here. It's like jot bearer. And one more thing, like just for the sake of simplicity, I didn't encode or I didn't form encode the parameters here. So Normally this call is like, or like the payload is like form encoded, but then it's just extremely hard to read. That's why I didn't do that in this diagram. But normally it looks, you have a lot more percent signs in there. <laughs> Let's just put it like this. Yeah. And one more thing I want to mention is, be in mind that with an HMAC, you do not have a signature, but you have a message authentication code because you're not using asymmetric cryptography if you're not sure about the difference between hmac and uh, digital signatures make sure to check out a video on my channel i have a dedicated uh, video about that one so you have this client secret uh, jot which means okay you have to use hmac sha algorithm which means you must have a shared secret and then going even further in terms of uh, security there's also private key jot so this one must use asymmetric uh, cryptography with a JSON web signature tokens. token. The rules are still the same. So you need to have uh, like the same claims are still required. Uh, the difference is now, of course, you now have a digital signature and you can use a strong uh, cryptographic uh, algorithm like ES256, which is based on elliptic curve uh, cryptography. And yeah, the rules here are the same. The difference now is that you don't have like a shared secret but what you have is you have a key pair and you as a client as a confidential client you have the private key and the public key and you share the public key with the authorization server you sign the token with your private key and then the authorization server verifies the signature with the public key so of course if you have the choice between uh, this option and this option then you should always go with this option private key jot because it's just more 
secure. And yeah, I think we already talked about the, the other parameters, right? So it's basically, here it's basically in that order, it's improving in terms of uh, security. Yeah, so none has least security, then client secret post, client secret basic, they have like the, the same level of security because you, you just send a client secret along. Um, then you have the client secret jot, which has a shared secret. This one is better because it uses uh, asymmetric cryptography. And then here we're taking it up even once we were taking it up one step further by using mutual TLS, which is also using uh, like asymmetric cryptography, but which has uh, other advanced things like a token binding that are also suggesting this RFC. But I have a dedicated video on that one. So if you're interested on that, how mutual TLS works and how it's deployed and what it does, uh, please check that out as well. Cool. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.